Shavua Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi Masechet Kiddushin. We are up to Perik Dalid Mishnah Hey. Today's Mishnah Yot should be Le'erun Nishmad Neria Ben Svedlana Aranbay Veliyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelov Chanabad Meriam Sason Ben Raya and Yoshua Ben Shifra Menuchatam Began Eden Amen and Le'avdi Ben Chaim Lechaim Vade Refua Shelemab Daniel Shano Ben Roza Betoch Shachol Yisrael. Having learned that a Kohen must check the lineage of certain female ancestors of his intended bride, the Mishnah teaches that if in the course of his investigation he finds someone who is certainly qualified, he does not need to investigate that person's ancestors. And botkin lo mina mizbech ulmala, we do not need to check the eligibility of a Kohen who brought offerings on the altar or anyone higher up on his family tree, any of his ancestors. If one of a woman's ancestors, ancestors was a Kohen, who served in the temple, there is no need to check any of his female ancestors because it may be assumed that such a Kohen had no disqualifications. For example, we learned in the previous Mishnah that a Kohen must check the lineage of the mother and grandmother of his intended bride's father. However, if her father was a Kohen who served in the temple, none of his ancestors have to be checked because before a Kohen was allowed to serve in the temple, the great Sanhedrin would make sure he had no marital disqualification. Vilomina Duchan Ulmala, nor does one need to check a Levi who stood on the platform of the temple to sing or any higher up on his family tree. The Levim stood on a special platform of the temple and sang while most communal offerings were brought. The great Sanhedrin would make sure that none of these Levim was a dis- disqualified person. Vilomina Sanhedrin Ulmala, nor does one need to check a judge on a Sanhedrin or any higher up on his family tree since these people too certainly had no disqualification. Only people who had no marital disqualifications could serve on the great Sanhedrin of 71 judges that sat in the temple or on any of the smaller Sanhedrins of 23 judges which were located in every city. Similarly, anyone whose ancestors are known to have been among the public officials, judges of monetary cases in Jerusalem. Monetary cases are judged by a panel of three judges. Although it is not necessary for these judges to be without marital disqualification, even a mamzel may serve as a judge. The courts in Jerusalem were particular to appoint only judges with no disqualifications. The gabaitz taka or charity collectors. Charity collectors were often insulted in the course of their work. If there was any disqualification in a collector's, a collector's lineage, it would have been used to insult them and would be sure, we would surely have known about it. They may marry off his daughters to the Kiuna to a Kohen, and there is no need to check his ancestors. Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yossi says, Af mi hatum ed shel tzipori, Also someone who signed as a witness in the court records of the town of Yishana, which is near Tzipori, does not need to have its ancestor checked. Geneolo- genealogical records were kept in this court, and only people with no disqualification of lineage were allowed to sign the documents there. Rabbi Hanina ben Antignos, Omer Rabbi Hanina ben Antignos says, Av mishia muhta beisteratia shel melech, also someone who was listed as a soldier in King David's army, does not need to have his ancestors checked. King David took only men without marital disqualifications for his army, so that the merit of the soldier's ancestors would help him win wars. And that is an of Mishnah Hey. Mishnah Vav discusses when the status of a halal or halala is passed on to his or her children. Bad halal zakhar, the daughter of a male halal, pisulam in a kiuna, is disqualified from marrying into the kiuna. She is a halala, may not marry a kohen. The olam. This disqualification is passed down forever, meaning a halal passes his status down to his son, and he to his son, and so on down the line of male descendants. The daughter of any of these descendants is a halala, who may not marry a kohen. We learned in chapter 3, Mishnah 12, that in a relationship where the man and woman are permitted to each other and their kiddushin takes effect, the child has the same status as the father, so when a halal marries an ordinary Jewish girl, which is entirely permitted and their kiddushin takes effect, their children are halalim, the son in turn passes this status on to their sons, and so on. Israel shenasa halala, however, if a Israel marries a halala, Bitok shera lekiuna, his daughter is fit to marry into the kiuna. She is not a halala because the status of a halala is not passed down from a halala to her children. This is based on the same rule. If an ordinary Jewish man married a halala, their children are ordinary Jews like their father and not halalim like their mother, as the Ramam writes in the Chodis Surabiya, chapter 19, Allah 15. The Mishnah specifies that the husband is a Israel. If a halala were to marry a kohen, their children, male and female, would be halalim since they are from a union between a kohen and a woman who is specifically forbidden to kohanim.
חלל שנשא בת ישראל בדף החלל מאיר לדורו וישראל ביתו פסולה לכהונה His daughter is unfit to marry to the Kiyuna since the daughter of a halal is a halal, like we said earlier. This law was already said at the beginning of the Mishnah. However, since the Mishnah just, just mentioned a case where the halal married an ordinary Jew, it repeats the parallel case in which a halal married an ordinary Jewish girl, even though it has already been mentioned that their children, the daughter of a halal, is a halal. The Mishnah discusses the daughter of a convert, Rabbi Yehuda Amir, Rabbi Yehuda says, Bad Gil Zachar, Kebat Halal Zachar, the daughter of a male convert is like the daughter of a male Halal, meaning just as a male Halal passes his status to his daughter, so does a male convert pass his status to his daughter. So, like a convert, she may not marry a Kohen. A Kohen may not marry a female convert, as taught in Mishnah 1, according to Rabbi Yehuda. The status of a convert like that of a halal passes down to the male line, but not to the female line. So a male convert passes his status down to his son, and he to his son, and so on, down the line of male descendants forever. The daughter of any of these descendants has the status of a convert, and is forbidden to a kohen. However, if a female convert married a Israel, her daughter does not have the status of a convert, and is permitted to the kohen, to a kohen. And the next Mishnah will cite a name who disagree with Rabbi Yehuda. And that is an about time today's Mishnah Yumi. Everybody should have Yishivu Atov. ברוך אדוני לעולם, אמן ואמן.